Hello everybody and welcome to part three of our natural language toolkit with Python for natural language processing tutorial video. If you're familiar with any of the machine learning video series that I have, you'll find that, like I say, most of your work when it comes to any sort of data analysis is usually organiza organization of data, cleaning up of data and all that. And like analysis is like right at the very end, it's like the cherry on top that you get after like 99% of your work is just about like organizing and structuring and pre-processing your data. So, so most of what NLTK does for you actually is NLTK does not perform the analysis generally for you. It's good you can use some stuff in NLTK to test things, stuff like that. But for the most part, it's a toolkit. Um, so most of what we we're going to cover, at least in these first few videos, is just the toolkit aspect of it, and then I'll show you guys how we can actually use it for analysis. But moving on, the next topic that we're going to be talking about is uh, it's called stemming. So the idea of stemming is kind of like a, it's a form of data pre-processing and it's a form of kind of, not really normalization, but it's the best word I can think of to compare it to. Uh, and the idea of it is you take words and you take the root stem of the word. So for example, if you've got uh, writing, the stem of writing would be rid, basically. So you get rid of the I-N-G and you have a stem of R-I-D. And RID is applicable to rid, ri or, or sorry, ride, riding, ridden, that kind of stuff. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do now is, it, uh, well, actually, first, why might you want to stem? Okay, so why are we even doing this? And the reason why is a lot of times you're going to have different variations of words based on their stems, um, or at least their affixes at the end. And but really the actual meaning of that word is unchanged. So for example, let's say uh, we have two sentences. We have I was taking a ride in the car, and then you've got another one I was riding in the car. Okay, these mean the exact same thing, but the word ride here is ride, and the word ride ish here is riding. But the sentences mean the exact same thing, and the use of the word here is identical. So if you can imagine all the words in the English language, plus they're all their fixations at the end of them, you could imagine that you'd have a huge database here, and a lot of times you would have two words that basically mean the exact same thing, taking up space in this database or table or whatever you're using to get values on words, or meaning even from words. They would have the exact same definition. It would be very redundant, very inefficient. So we use stemming to kind of help uh, this problem. So with uh, natural language processing uh, has had a stemming algorithm around for a really long time, and it's called the Porter Stemmer. This one's actually been around since like 1979. So if you think natural language processing is like a new thing, that's your problem. So anyway, um, so f to, to use it with NLTK, we're going to go um, from NLTK.stem import Porter, st Porter Stemmer. 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 Um, and just to just like everything else, there's there are multiple stemmers. You can train some stemmers yourself. Um, the Porter stemmer is actually pretty darn good, so we'll just use it. <clears throat> use it for now, anyway. Next, we're going to say from NLTK.tokenize import. Um, we don't really need the sent tokenizer, so we'll just do the word tokenize. Tokenize. Cool. Now we're going to say ps equals Porter stemmer. And now let's make an example list of words. So example words, and that's going to equal a list. And we'll have uh, some stuff in here. Let's do five for now. OK, so let's think of some example words. You've got uh, Python. You might uh, be a Python yourself. It might be the act of being a Python, something like that. I don't know. Uh, then you've got a Pythoner. This is someone who Pythons. Uh, then you've got Pythoning. This is someone who is actively doing the Python. Then you have uh, Python. This is generally what happens when you solve a problem with Python. That problem was Pythoned. And then you've got Python Lee. This is just how you kind of handle yourself. He handles himself Python Lee. Okay? So those are example words. And now let us stem those words and see what we get. So we're going to do 4W in example words. And we're going to do print ps.stem w. Cool. Now, uh, let's go ahead and run that really quick. 
So here are the stems. So as you can see, the first one, two, three, four uh, are all the same, right? They all stemmed down to Python as the root stem, except for the last one, who is Python Lee. Okay, and so this one has its own little stem, probably because of the meaning changes slightly. Uh, but you could argue the same thing with all of these other ones. Um, but anyway, we'll close that for now. And um, so whenever you're stemming, like what would a sentence look like that was stemmed? Okay, so let's see. Let me, we'll comment this off and let's make a sentence with our words just to really drive the point home. So new text equals. Um, it is very important to be Pythonly while you are Pythoning with Python. All Pythoners have Pythoned poorly at least once. Okay, now we're going to say what happened. There we are. Uh, we're going to say words equals word underscore tokenize new text. And then again, we'll just use this exact same uh, thing up here for w in example words, only now it is words. Wads. Save and run that. It is very <laughs> import to be Python Lee. While you are Python with Python, <laughs> all Python have Python poorly at least once. I'm not quite sure why once stemmed. Let's see, is there any other iterate once? I can't think of one. Like I'm not sure why it stems down to O N C. Anyway, um, fine. Yeah, it's just not meaningful. So as you can see, uh, we can stem all this and important, um, importance, important. The meaning does not need to necessarily change that kind of stuff. So anyways, uh, that's just a quick example of stemming with NLTK and kind of why you might want to stem with NLTK. Um, it really depends on what you do and kind of like what your goal is because a lot of times, as you'll see as we move forward, you won't actually have to stem. Uh, you'll feed words through NLTK and they'll actually, you'll use WordNet instead and WordNet will actually find you the synonym using Synset and yeah, so really stemming is something you should know. You should know how to do it, but moving forward, you, you may or may not actually ever utilize stemming because you just don't need to now that you've got WordNet and Synset and uh, nowadays even ImageNet, what? Anyway, uh, so that's it for this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions or comments on stemming, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.